When Anna married her husband Tom, she developed a really close relationship with her grandmother-in-law, Victoria. Unfortunately, Victoria lost her life due to a tragic reason and her family members caused a scene at her funeral. When the family members saw what Victoria left for Anna and Tom, they laughed at them and caused a scene at the funeral. That was until they saw a shocking note. This story all started when Anna fell in love with Tom. They met in school and knew right away that they were going to end up together. Before Tom proposed to Anna, he decided to have her meet his family, but he didn't take her to see his parents. Instead, he took Anna to his grandmother's house. Anna was a bit nervous to meet Victoria, Tom's grandmother, but when she saw her for the first time, all her misgivings flew out of the window. On that first visit, Victoria made a lot of efforts to make Anna feel welcome. She prepared all kinds of meals for Anna because she didn't know what her prospective daughter-in-law would be like. As if that wasn't enough, she made sure to ask Anna for her favorite food so she could prepare them the next time she came for a visit. For Anna, Victoria reminded her of her own grandmother who had passed away some time ago. She felt like God had blessed her with a new one to replace the one she lost. While they were planning their wedding, Victoria gifted Tom and his bride with some money. The amount of money they were given covered more than half of the wedding expenses. Tom and Anna were overjoyed. If only they knew the problems that would arise later from the monetary gift, they would have turned it down. Their bliss didn't prevent the new couple from acting dutiful to their family. Anna often paid visits to her in-laws, especially her grandmother-in-law. This was how she discovered that all was not well within the family. Coming from a very peaceful home filled with love and harmony with the exception of a few squabbles, it was shocking for Anna to realize that her in-laws, with the exception of her husband, truly didn't like Victoria. The reason wasn't far-fetched. When Victoria had married her husband George, a very wealthy man, Tom's dad and siblings didn't like it. They felt their father was betraying their mother who had walked out on them, but George didn't care because he truly loved Victoria. When he died, his children stopped being completely civil to Victoria. They tried to make her life a living hell, despite the fact that Victoria looked after them like they were her own kids. The first time Anna witnessed her father-in-law shouting at a stepmother was shocking. Anna was visiting Victoria on the weekends like she normally did. Anna had just finished washing the dishes when her father-in-law suddenly barged in with her mother-in-law. I need some money for my business, he said without even bothering to greet. Anna watched her grandmother's reaction. She looked sad and helpless. I'm not giving you any money until you tell me what exactly you want to use the money for, Victoria replied. Well, there's no way a gold digger like you would understand what I want to do with it. You don't have the knowledge or expertise and you'd be wasting our time, so just give me the money. Anna could see that Victoria was hurt by her stepson, but she said nothing. Her in-laws stormed out of the house when it was clear that Victoria wasn't going to give them any money, but that wasn't the end of it. Over the weeks, Anna's in-laws hounded Victoria for money until she was forced to give in. When Anna discovered that Victoria had given her in-laws the money, she felt helpless that she couldn't interfere, so she told Tom what happened. I think you should talk to your parents so they treat Grandma well. She shouldn't have to give them her money now that they're grown adults, she said. Tom conceded, and he was true to his words because the next time they visited her in-laws, he brought up the matter. However, his father got extremely angry. What do you mean I should stop asking her for money? She's spending all the money my father left for us. It's just fair that we get to spend some of that money too. You shall not speak of this topic to me ever again, Thomas, his father said with a tone of finality. Tom and Anna didn't like it, but they had to stop talking about it at that moment. It didn't end there, however, because as soon as Tom's uncle and auntie, Roger and Shannon, discovered that Victoria had given Francis and his wife money, they went to demand their share, and the whole cycle repeated itself again. The constant battles proved to be too much for Victoria. She fell seriously ill and became bedridden. Upon discovering her illness, Anna and Tom tried their best to take care of her, but they couldn't do as much as they wanted to due to the nature of their jobs. 
When they both used up their leave from work, they had no choice but to ask the rest of the family for help. At the meeting, Francis, Tom's father, said, I definitely can't afford to leave my business to take care of her, and neither can my wife. Roger and Shannon also gave flimsy excuses. Roger claimed to be traveling abroad for a lecture, while Shannon said that she couldn't because it didn't suit her lifestyle. Why don't we put her in a facility? I know a great place. My husband's auntie had to go there when she didn't have anyone to take care of her while she was sick. Shannon suggested. Tom and Anna shut down the idea right away. We might not be able to take care of grandma properly, but we aren't putting her in a nursing home, Tom said. Unbeknownst to them, Victoria could hear everything they were saying. That night, while Tom and Anna slept, she managed to pack her things and called for a friend to pick her up. Anna was surprised when she woke up the next morning to see that Victoria had packed up her stuff. She begged and pleaded for her to stay, but Victoria insisted on leaving. My child, I'd rather leave now and cause you no more trouble. Let me go, and I promise to return when I'm feeling better. You have to take care of yourself and Tom in my absence, okay? I will, Grandma. You have to promise you'd get better and return to us soon, okay? Anna replied. Victoria promised to return soon, but she never fulfilled the promise. Barely two days after she left, Anna and Tom got a call that she fell unconscious and had to be rushed to the hospital. They rushed down to the hospital as soon as they got to call. None of the other family members showed up. The couple stayed by their grandma's side all night, but she never woke up. She passed away in her sleep. Anna and Tom were devastated, but they managed to plan her funeral. At the funeral, Anna's in-laws were rowdy and uncouth. They kept shouting for Victoria's lawyer to show them the will so they could get their inheritance all the while the memorial service was going on. The lawyer was forced to come out to attend to them so they could stop disturbing the service. They didn't even have the decency to wait until Victoria was buried. The lawyer gave everyone an equal share of $50,000, except for Anna and Tom. Anna got an old wooden jewelry box, while Tom got an old clay piggy bank. When everyone else saw what they got, they laughed in their faces. Hold that care and see what it got you? Francis taunted. That's their problem. I'm off to Barbados and this inheritance will come in handy, Roger said. Their words didn't get to the couple as they were still reeling from the shock of their grandmother's death. They all left after that, not bothering to wait for the rest of the funeral. Anna and Tom didn't check the gifts they got until months later when Tom accidentally knocked off the piggy bank when cleaning. The bank shattered into several pieces and lying in the midst of the rubble was a key. Wondering what the key could open, Tom called for Anna. As soon as Anna saw the key, she remarked that it looked like the key to the jewelry box. Excited, they tried it and opened the box. They were surprised at the contents of the box. It had a letter from Victoria explaining that the box contained the deeds to her house and life insurance that they were eligible to claim. She told them they could do whatever they wanted with their inheritance, but she preferred them spending the money on themselves than spending it on their relatives. Sure enough, the life insurance, which was worth $2 million, was in their name. Victoria had really left them all that money plus a house. Anna and Tom moved into their new house and put the money into a trust for their future babies. When her in-laws discovered what had happened, they came running. They tried to get the couple to give up their inheritance so they could pay off the debts they had amassed after squandering their inheritance, but Anna and Tom refused in order to obey Victoria's wishes. Because they couldn't pay off their debts on time, they lost their houses and means of living, while Tom and Anna enjoyed their own inheritance. What do you think of Anna and Tom's decision? Would you share your inheritance in that kind of situation? How would you react if you're Victoria? Thanks for watching and see you next time.